Uh, Matthew chapter 17 in the very first verse. Matthew 17 in the very first verse. The Bible says, And after six days Jesus taketh, taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain cart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment white as light, and behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. And while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud <coughs> overshadowed them, with a loud, and behold, a, a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Rise, be not afraid. And they lifted up their eyes and they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. I'd like to preach the Lord be my help this morning on the thought, when I see Christ revealed. Dear Lord, we thank you for your goodness and watch care. Lord, we thank you for the ones that you brought this way. Lord, we know that uh, you're in all things. Lord, we know that you're here every time we meet together and we give you great glory for that. We pray this morning that uh, you would help us. We feel great in need of your help this morning and our desires that you might speak through us. Help this people here. Encourage your servants, Lord, that are present among us, and save uh, the lost according to your mercy and grace that we pray it. In Christ's name, amen. Now, <clears throat> we find some fairly familiar verses of scriptures, and we're going to look at a, a number of places, but I want you to see the real thing is Christ revealed himself as God. He had revealed Himself in many ways, and in our own life, He reveals us in many, many ways. But I want you to see as we go along, He reveals in different ways. As comforter, as provider, as friend. In so many ways, He can manifest Himself, and He does when we look for it. Now, in the first verse, I want you to see the select three that was invited to go. They, they, they were specific, they always stood apart, they were always different than the average. It should be your desire this morning to be more than the average. I think we get real satisfied. Now it's never, you know, it's, don't, it ceases to amaze me, never ceases to amaze me, that we're never satisfied in the flesh, but we get satisfied in the Spirit so very easily. Just, oh, as long as I go, that's okay. No, that can't be further from the truth. When you go, if God don't meet with you, there is a problem. And you know what? The problem has to be us. We want to blame, we even blame the Lord. Yeah, sure do. We like to blame the preacher. We, we like to blame the people around us that sit in a pretense. We like to blame everybody but ourselves. But every time that we come to the Lord's house, we can see Jesus if we look for Him. Back in the very first verse, uh, again, we see the three people that were in the inward part. I want you to see also, and, and I kind of missed this before, it says He bringeth them up on a high mountain. Now, it does not say that they climbed the mountain, and, and I've been guilty kind of preaching that myself, but it just says He brings them up there. He leads them in the right direction and gets them to the top of the mountain. Verse 2, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment white as light. Now I want you to see, they saw him in a brand new light. They saw him really as God. They saw him more than the man of the Lord Jesus Christ. They, they had been looking for a restorer of Israel. Somebody to bring to bring the, the government of Israel back, to restore it as a nation, but here they saw Him as God. Now, I'll remind you this, this vision, that, that them beholding Him as God, it was short-lived on the mountain, and it was short-lived in their memory. Now, many times when we see God, uh, we all 
thank you, Lord, praise your dear name, and we hit the door and we forget about his provision before we get back to bone smell. Now that, that 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 is the nature of man. But here they saw him as God, they saw him for truly who he was the first time they had seen him. And in this way, verse 3, And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, or Elisha, talking with him. Now, I've often wondered why these two figures appeared with him. Number one, it was just because God, uh, the Lord Jesus talked to them. He knew who they were. But I've also looked at it as this. Those individuals had more reverence, really, at this point, for Moses and Elisha than they did for Jesus. And don't get down on that. They were Jews. They knew who Moses was. They knew who Elisha was. And they saw him in a brand new light because they, because he met with these two individuals. Now, you can think about that this week. If they recognized Christ in a new way because who he was standing with, how does people recognize you with who you're standing with? Again, it gets back to the people we hang with, and we've got to, we've got to be very cautious with that. And so they, they seen and recognized them as well. Verse 4, Then answered Peter, It is good for us to be here. Now, I'll say two things about that. Peter was very, very right in his thing, uh, in saying it's good for us to be here. He, he was correct in that. But there's times when it's better just to keep your big mouth shut. He only said that because he didn't have anything else to say. He, you know what? What's wrong with silent praise of our Lord Jesus Christ? Why do we have to run our mouth? Sometimes we just need to sit in submission and listen and say nothing at all. And I don't mean just at the preaching time. I mean in private prayer time. When you're home alone, you don't have to be mentioning Aunt Sadie and, and Cousin Ralph while you're praying. Just sit and listen and you'll hear something. You, you will hear something in your heart if we do that. So we see that Peter kind of got ahead of himself. And he answered, then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here if thou wilt, if it's your permission, if it's your will, if thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles. Now, I thought it was very interesting that, that Peter came up with this. Because at this point, they weren't worshiping in a tabernacle. They were worshiping in the temple, or what was left of it. They, they, they were worshiping in the place where God had told them to. But the, ta the tabernacle was for mobile people. The tabernacle was a tent for God's people on the move. You know what? We'd be well today to think of us as a people, a people on the move. We don't need a permanent place. We need a tabernacle. That way, if God says, get up and go, you can get up and go. And so I think it's unusual that Peter made this statement concerning the tabernacles. But I want you to see he missed the boat in this that he wanted to build three. We just need one. We just need something that would honor the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing more. But again, Peter being a Jew and the way that his nature was, he kind of got the, the car, the horse before the car, the cart before the horse and said, let's try this a different way. Verse 5. And while he, meaning Peter, yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which say, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye Him. Now, I want you to see that, again, and this is not the only time that it occurred, that the great God Jehovah, the Father, was saying, The law is over. That, that testament has been fulfilled. You listen to Christ. That's what we need to hear today. We don't even need to hear some new vain philosophy and somebody that wants to twist things around. And, and did you ever... What we need is just simply to hear from Christ. Uh, we, we, we don't need nobody's ideas and philosophies. We need the plain Word of God. 
and just what the Bible says. And you know what I have found in plain study myself? A lot of what I was taught historically, this Bible never says. It's man's ideas. A lot of stuff when I was a young Baptist came straight out of the Pennington Church Manual and had nothing to do with this book. Did you ever think about that? We, this is enough. We, we don't need nothing else. And, and, and so we find then that we as the Lord's people, He manifested Himself and said, the Lord, this is what you need. These other two, the law is over with. Verse 6, And when the disciples heard it, meaning the voice, and it could have also been the message. You know what? When you hear that your little gig is up, so to speak, that the law is done with, what you've been trusting in is no longer in existence. It might make you fall back too. When you find out that you think you've been saved for years upon years, and the Holy Spirit reveals that you're lost, it'll knock you on your back. It, it, it'll take you backwards, and you won't really, you won't really know how to respond. And so, when they heard from God, and they made this realization that the law indeed was done with, fixing to be done with, it knocked them down. Verse seven. And Jesus came and touched him, saying, Arise, be not afraid. How many times do you think that he said that to them? How many times has he said it to you? You know, we say we trust Christ, but when it comes down to the events around us, do you really trust Christ? Do you trust Him implicitly? Do you trust Him enough that, that irregardless what comes around us, Christ is your center? If the, if the stock market crashes, it's still God. If you no longer get the money in your bank account, it's still God. If you're scrambling around looking for a piece of food, it's still God. Do you think any of that happens by accident? Certainly not. And listen, we're in, we, we live in a nation where the good or bad is fixing to be under the judgment of God. And you know what? National Israel was judged. And there were a few good men in that day, but they were judged too. Jeremiah was drug off with the rest of them, was he not? Sure he was. That's why in that place you begin writing the Lamentations. And so we see then, we as God's people sometimes have fearfulness about us when we should not. Verse 8, And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Jesus only. He was the center of attention. No longer the Judea, the Judea law. No longer what was left behind, but Christ only. Only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell no, tell the vision of no man until the Son of Man be risen again. Now, they were to keep it to themselves. It, it was a private matter, at least for a while. They, they had seen Christ revealed. Now, before I get very much further, I will say this. I believe it's in the little epistle of 3rd John, but I'm not sure about that. He says, children, keep yourselves from images. You keep yourself, that's why when you go into a Catholic church, and listen, I, I'm, not, I'm not harping on anything, but you can go into the Methodist, you can go into the Episcopalian, you can go into the Presbyterian, and you can see their little crucifixes. In a Catholic church, you will even see the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Let me, let me assure you this morning, He is not on that cross. And I fully believe He's offended by the very, the very suggestion that He remains on the cross. We need to keep ourselves from images. We need to be very cautious 
what we bow down to because, listen, the, the Bible is too clear. But yet and still, daily along the way, a, a, not, not every day, but all along the way, I have seen Jesus in new lights. I've seen Jesus as something different. I've seen, seen, I've seen Jesus as something more, and you will too as you go along. Now look with me very quickly, and Brother Junior was dancing all around uh, my verses, but that's fine. The Lord works that way. Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, in verse 8. Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 8. And, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Now, just as an interjection here, I want you to see when God met with them, they were somewhat afraid. You know what? I really believe this today. God, God has not met with us. And it's our fault. It, it's sinful to us in our, on our part. God has not met with His own people generally, generally enough that we don't even have sense to be afraid. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Has His character changed that we would no longer fear Him? Absolutely not. He is still to be feared in every way that you can think of because He is mighty and powerful and does things always well, even to the ending of life, if that's what He chose, chooses to do. Verse 10, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, and there shall be to all people. Can you imagine in your mind's eye uh, a, a, a host of the he a huge number of the heavenly host abiding in the sky above the shepherds saying, Jesus has come. Emmanuel has arrived. He is here among us. Go ye to Bethlehem and worship Him. What a wonderful time. Well, what a wonderful thing to see a heaven, uh, the multitude of heavenly hosts above you. You know what? It happened. It, it, it was real. They, 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 saw, they saw the skies gleaming with the heavenly host. Can you imagine what a time? And then they get there and they find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. Now, can you imagine on your way to see the king... And you get there, and he's in the barn wrapped in dirty rags. Don't look much like a king in our eyes, does it? But he was. You know, have you ever seen a an ugly baby? I have. That's when you go, oh, I think that's sweet. <laughs> because you don't want to lie, right? You don't want to say he's pretty when he's not. Oh, he's sweet. Isn't that a pretty dress she has on? You know, so, so, something to avoid what you're really thinking about the baby. You know what? And this is my own opinion. I don't believe the Lord Jesus was a, a gorgeous baby. I really don't, because he had no form nor comeliness. He was one of those babies you'd have to say, Isn't he sweet? Isn't he nice? Isn't he well mannered? But the very Son of the living God right there before us. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? You know, this too should amaze us is whom He revealed Himself to. And we don't know how many shepherds were there. We don't know how many individual was there. We know there was a, at least two because He said, come, let us go and see this thing that has been revealed to us. There's at least two. I think more than that, probably many were there. We don't know. But they went to see the Lord Jesus Christ just a little time later at the time of His birth. Uh, the the, the men of the east said, we've seen his star. We, we, we've seen it appear. He's known that. We know that he's there. But you know what? It took two full years for them to make their journey. And when they got there, they found a toddler like Gracie. And they didn't find the baby. When, when you see them three kings, number one, we don't know how many there were of them either. It said they brought them three different types of gifts. But it didn't say that there were three kings. 
So we have, though that some, we three kings of Orient Dar out with the bathwater. Because we don't know how many there were. Right? And so we see then, they come and they, they worship Him and they see Him in a new way. They see this baby. And, and uh, some things they missed too was this, they did not see the sinless Son of God. They did not see that little infant that was there before them as the Christ child. Were they told about it? Yes. They said, Emmanuel, to it. But did they see it? It's a great blessing when, when, when that becomes more than a Christ mass scene. When that becomes more than something you pull out of the closet in December. When it becomes something real and truthful and wonderful. Even in this it becomes a great and glorious and marvelous thing. Something that we should think about. Gospel of Luke chapter 2. Further down in verse 45, Luke chapter 2, verse 45, and when they, speaking, speaking of Mary and Joseph, and when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. Now, to give you a little background, by this time he's something like a 12 year old boy, uh, just, just, uh, just a lad, and you know what? When we traveled together, uh, especially when our family was larger, we always tried to do a head count, make sure they were all there. God went down. We still left one one time despite doing our inventory. We, we missed Matt somehow, but anyway, we didn't got too far before we realized he was gone. In this day, they traveled in a different way. For example, if we were all going somewhere, Gracie might be with Brother Junior, and, and uh, Bella might be uh, Bella might be with Brother Terry and them, and and you really didn't do a head count because you was all traveling together. And then when you get uh, down to eating time, I'll say, uh, Brother Terry, how's Bella? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how Bella is. I haven't seen her. And then they became panic stricken. All their family, the large, the small, nobody had seen Jesus. Nobody knew where he was. Nobody could find him. So Mary and Joseph became very concerned. And they went back to Jerusalem. And it came to pass that after three days, can you imagine three full days, not knowing where your child was, not knowing where he's at, seeking him. You know what? First of all, of course, this was a carnal seeking. They wanted to see the young man, the person of Jesus Christ. But can you imagine seeking, first of all, your child as uh, full through the terror and the panic stricken you must be, waiting to see your child for three days, not knowing that if he was living or dead, and even when you got back to Jerusalem, if you would would find him or not. Jerusalem was a huge town. And it was a very active town. And being able to find him among all those people was not necessarily a very likely thing. But they did what they could do. And they began to look for Jesus. Now with that said. Can you imagine. You know what? I've had some sleepless nights on the journey back. Don't you? What if we don't find him? What are we going to do? You know, they knew he was the Christ child. What if we don't find him? We've been given this responsibility and we blew it. Well, what are we going to do? And, and so as they go back that way, there must have been a multitude on their minds. There must have been a lot of things that they wandered through. And when they finally got back, I think it's a glorious thing, they went to the temple and when... Uh, and it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And when they saw him, they were amazed. Now, a lot of people say that the, the doctors or the teachers were amazed. According to that, if you just read the rules of English, the they had to be referring to Mary and Joseph. What, what's the subject of that sentence? It was Mary and Joseph. 
Now, I'm sure the doctors and the theologians were surprised and impressed, but Mary and Joseph were blown away. See, they seen Christ in a brand new way. They, they seen Him in a way they hadn't seen Him before. If you had one of your children talking about the theology of the great God Jehovah and knowing things that you know full well that He had never been exposed to because they were poor people, all they did was a small carpentry business, and you see them saying things to the learned people that you know He had never heard before. They saw Him in a new way. They, they saw, hey, this thing is real. Hey, we've not gone crazy. Yes, we saw the band of angels that Joseph saw. And says, you go ahead and marry, marry. It's a, it's a child of my own self. But when Mary said, be it so even unto me now, it was one more con confirmation that that's in fact who it was. They, they were thrilled. They were thrilled at the thought. They were amazed. Verse 48, and when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wished ye not that I must be about my father's business? Now, two things. First of all, I want you to see he knew what the priority was. And the second thing, we don't hear of Jesus again for almost 20 years. If you follow the timeline of his life and him revealing himself at the uh, age of 30, this would have been 18 years later. You know what I believe he did? I believe he resubmitted himself. He's, the time's not yet come. I'm going to learn to be a carpenter. I'm going to do what I can for my dad. And somewhere in that time frame, Joseph did die. We don't know how, we don't know when, we don't know uh, the, the details of it, but by the time the Lord Jesus' ministry is there, he's taking responsibility of his mother, as an oldish Jewish son would do. Everything he did, everything in the back of his mind, his mother's needs had to be there. And that her provision was made. And, and so we find that as he goes along the way, he, that they saw him, they saw him as something that they hadn't seen him before. They saw him as an answer that they had previously, previously not seen, even though they had been given the plan. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 14. Very familiar verses of Scripture. Uh, Matthew 14 and verse 25. Matthew 14 and verse 25, the Bible says, And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came unto them walking on the sea. Now, we know that, that, that they had seen the Lord Jesus. This was about halfway through the Lord Jesus' own personal ministry. If you look at the recording of Matthew, it's dead in the middle. There's 28 chapters and this is the, this is the 14th. Right in the middle of that event, that timeline. And let me say this. This was after the event when he said, Peace be still. And the winds and the waves obeyed his voice. This was after that. You know what? I personally don't believe they learned much from peace be still. He came into the ship, the Bible says, and they worshipped him following that. But another day and another storm has come. You know what? If you live long enough, another day and another storm is going to come. That never ends for other people and it never ends for God's people either. It will happen again until we're called away to be home with the Lord. It will happen again. I wish I could give you a, a group hug and say that that wasn't true, but I'd be lying to you. I'm not going to do that. And, and so we see that, that sometimes later they find themselves in the midst of the sea once more and then they see the Lord Jesus Christ come coming to them, walking on the sea. What a marvel that is. What, you know what? They saw Him, first of all, in the carnal sense, and said, man, that's a ghost. That's when they said, it is a spirit. 
But I mean, it's a ghost. See, they didn't see Jesus for who he was, did they? But seeing him as a ghost, isn't that a different way? Sure it is. They, they had not seen him as a ghost before. And then we find next, he says, it is I. Walking on the sea, coming toward the ship. The Gospel of Luke says they were fixing to walk past him. His trip across the sea, they went in a boat, he was going to walk across it. And they saw him in the distance and then he walked over toward them. And Peter said, Lord, if it be thou. See, he still didn't believe. When we see Jesus provide for things out of nothing, we often attribute it to other things. Her, and I, I'm not going to say no names, heard of a family that were literally down to nothing. And, and it wasn't our kind of church. They seemingly loved the Lord. There wouldn't be much we would agree with them on. But they were out of everything, down to nothing. You know what? As slim as pickings of God, I've always had some pickings. They had nothing. And there was a, a group of PBA workers close to where they were at. And they used to have those outages. The outage was over. And those TBA men just happened to bring, they were cleaning out their apartment and said, here, here's a bunch of food. We don't want it to go to waste. Is there anything too far from my God? You know what? They saw God in a brand new way. Now, when she told that story, she had been attributed to God. But you know what most people wouldn't give credit to? <laughs> Those TBA workers. They were just an instrument in the Master's hand. You know what? We look through our lives and a lot of times we miss it. We, we miss the something out of nothing. Because we're not spiritually minded. Uh, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ, I think, I think it's actually in a writing of Paul, he says, Be ye not carnally minded. And, and we think about dwelling on the flesh. No, giving attribute to a provision of God to the provision of man, and that's a carnal mindset. That, that is saying, that's a, giving attributes, that the accomplishments that God made to someone else. Gospel of Luke. Luke 22. Luke 22, verse 41. Luke 22, verse 41. The Bible says, And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, kneeling down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be with it, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Now this is a portion that, uh, this is a portion that sovereign grace people don't always like to look at, but we have to acknowledge is that we see here Christ humanity. We, we, we've seen time and time again His deity. We saw Him as God time and time again this morning. But here we have to acknowledge He was asking to be excused from what lay ahead. We see Him as a human. Uh, I don't, I, we, we look about and uh, don't know who's been through the most in the group. But I would say physically it would probably be you. If you had known about that accident on January the 3rd, would you ask, ask to be excused from it? Sure. Sure you would have. Every one of us would have. See, the only difference is you didn't know it in Christ yet. He knew it was coming. He knew the anguish and the misery. And for a brief minute, He showed His humanity. Very, very scary thought, ain't it? Do you, do you think he could have been excused? I do. In fact, the Bible says at any moment there were ten legions of angels at his disposal. Could he have been excused? You bet you. But he was very obedient. Not my will, but thine will be done. 
very obedient servant. We, we see him as a, as a submissive servant. We see him as the very son of God doing what the father preferred. Even over his own life, we see his humanity. And what a wonderful blessing that is. Gospel of John, chapter 19. Brother Junior did read this one for me. Gospel of John, chapter 19. In verse 26. And Jesus therefore saw his mother. And the disciples standing by whom he loved. And he saith unto his mother. Woman. Behold thy son. Two things I want you to see. I believe again we get a little glimpse at his humanity. Because he knew where his vessel was. He, the Bible says certain, certain, concerning Jesus that He came in the likeness of sinful flesh. He had no sin about Him. He, you know what? His, his flesh was different despite what a lot of people say. He did not become submissive to being the Son of God. He was the Son of God. And, and He came in that role. That's why He didn't die until He said it's finished. In fact, it was an impossibility for him to die until the mission was accomplished. Until it was done. Until it was fulfilled. And then he, the Bible says in Matthew and Mark, he yielded himself. He, he, he allowed himself to die on that occasion because he, wanted, he, he, he desired to fulfill the atonement and the promise that was made and, and, and the good fruits that would come from that. He, he desired that. But I want you to see in his... It, Recognizing that the fact that he still had his mother's interest at heart. Now, I don't know about his other brothers and sisters. They, they are mentioned. I know he had one Judas. He had a Judas in his family. It's kind of like a, you know, uh, a John. Everybody has a John in their family. Very common name in that time. I believe he wrote the epistle of Jude. I believe he began to see Christ besides him as his brother. And that's just my own opinion. But I do want you to see this. He remembered his mother. And he provided for his mother. John took on that responsibility. And it really would have fell to the next brother in line. And why he didn't let that happen, I don't know. I don't know if he, if he thought that maybe his younger brother wasn't capable or that the provision, maybe his financial situation wasn't such that he could trust him. I don't know what it was, but he, he broke that. But he did provide for her and say, John, you take care of her. You see, it's humanity in that. Everybody has a special place in their home for their mother. And he was no different. He, he, he was the very, very same. And he wanted to be sure that she was taken care of. Last place in the book of Revelation. You see Christ as King. You see Him as God. You see Him all powerful and almighty. You see Him back in, in glory. You see Him back in heaven. The Bible says the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revealing of Jesus, seeing Jesus, who He is, seeing Him in this role, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto Him to shew unto us, unto His servants, things that must shortly come to pass. And He sent and signified it by His angel, Unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Now, again, this is that I think all the epistles of John were written by the same man, but this certainly gives us full credence that this one belonged to the apostle of John because he saw it all. Verse 3, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. 
John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, peace from him which he which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ who is faith, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. See, John began to seem much more, didn't he? John began to seem far beyond to that person he laid on his breast and said, Is it I? See, by this point, he saw him as God. He saw him as mine, certainly. But he also seen him as God. See, sometimes it, it, it rattles my brain that he can be every bit God, every bit Jesus, and every bit the Holy Ghost all at the same time. That, that, that's a marvel to me. But he can, and he does, and he is. And so we find, we find John somewhere along the way, and I understand if you can listen to what uh, books and theologians say about the time that he met the Lord Jesus Christ, he was 15, and by the writing of this letter, he was 110 years old. 95 years. That's a, lot, a long time to learn the nature of Christ, isn't it? But the, and then you know what that says to me? If I last two more years, or if I last 50 more years, I'm going to learn more about Him. I don't know Him better then than I do now. Sometimes that's hard for me to understand, but I do know it's true. He saw Him, he saw him in a brand new way. He saw Him, he saw him in, in ways that He had not seen previously. And I believe He, he loved Him even more. Verse 6, And have made us kings and priests unto, unto God and His Father, and, and to His Father, be, to Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, He cometh in clouds, and every eye shall see Him, and, sh and they also, even that pierced Him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because Him. Even so, Amen. I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. That's how John saw him. That, that was the revealing. You see, he saw him as God. He, he, he saw him for who he was all through the, 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 four, church, the four letters of the apostles time and time again. They said, Master, Teacher. And you know, some of them, I probably even meant it as Master, you're my Master, I'll listen to what you say. But here we find almost a hundred years later, he saw him as God. He saw him for who he really is. You know what? He's our provider. He's our friend. Every role, every Everything that you can get a hold of in your mind, your needs, your wants, your desires, everything that you can think about, He is. He is who He is. So, the next time that you're a little bit discouraged, think of who He is. The next time you're thumbing through the Scriptures and the Lord opens your heart and you say, Oh, there it is. You see Him as God. You, you see Him for who He is. We desperately need to do that. Every time the days get rough, and listen, it's getting rough and it's going to be rougher. Let me say, He's God. And even in the trials, even in the most difficult time, somehow, you'll see Him as God. Do you see Him that way? Have you ever truly been born again? <coughs> You know, a lot of times I believe that phrase has been overly used. Have you been regenerate? Do you, do you know it? Do, do you cling to it? You say, oh, I don't know. Well, do you crave his company? You know, people that you love, you crave their company. Me and Donna uh, kind of we're both kind of one of those people that like our personal space. 
and uh, one of our one of uh, uh, one of our uh, children. I don't even know which one I think it's that. He said, uh, "I don't see how y'all ever had children." And uh, because we both are just distant people, and that's okay. But I know when I was in the Ukraine, it was two weeks that I did get to see them. Probably the most we've been separated in 25 years. I, I ran out of the plane, and I held my wife in my arms, and I kissed her. I didn't care if Oprah Lakini was sitting by me or not. Absence does make the heart go longer. And you know, sometimes when we don't hear from them, from the wild, and the Lord Jesus manifests Himself. It's a sweet, sweet time. It's a good time. So look for Him. Look for Him in everything you do, and you'll see, you'll see some kind of role.